We will start by explaining the potato paradox. Imagine you start with 100 kilograms of potatoes that are 99% water, so only one kilogram is dry matter. After dehydrating the potato, the water content drops to 98%, but the dry matter remains one kilogram. Now, since that one kilogram of dry matter makes up 2% of the new total weight, the total weight becomes 50 kilograms. It's surprising that a 1% change in water content nearly halves the weight, which is why this problem is called a paradox. Now, we will explore a well-known example of a counterintuitive problem in math, which is the Monty Hall problem. Imagine you're on a fun American game show of the 60s, Let Us Make a Deal, where there are three closed doors. Behind one door is a shiny car, while behind the other two doors, the show host hides goats. You are asked to choose a door, giving you a one in three chance of having picked the car and a two in three chance of having picked a goat. Then the host, who knows exactly what is behind each door, opens one of the remaining doors, where there is always a goat, and offers you the chance to switch to the other unopened door. For example, if you choose door one and the host, who knows exactly what is behind each door, opens door two to reveal a goat, then he offers you the chance to switch to door three. So, would you switch it? Most people think that after one door is opened, there is now an even chance between the two remaining doors, like a simple 50-50 guess. But that is where the surprise lies. Suppose we have three possibilities, where the car can be in any one of the three doors represented like this. So, we have goats in these positions, right? Now, suppose in each game you are going to choose door one, and then you will definitely switch to the other door the host leaves shut. In game one, the host can open any door, and whichever one he leaves you will result in a loss. Now, in game two, the host is left with no choice, and he has to open door three, and thus we will win the car on switching the door. Similarly, in game three, again, the host is left with no choice, and he has to open door two, and thus we will win the car on switching the door. That's two wins out of three, which is nearly 67%, and not a simple 50-50 guess. And therefore, this problem is counterintuitive. Next up, we have the birthday paradox. You are in a room with 23 people. What is the chance that at least two of them share the same birthday? These are random people, and no twins or anything like that. Most people guess it is very low because there are 365 possible birthdays. But you will be shocked to know that there is a more than 50% chance that at least two of them share the same birthday. And if you increase the number of people to 57, then there is a around 99% chance that at least two of them share the same birthday. Before understanding the next counterintuitive problem, let me tell you what an expectation of a probability is. Suppose you flip a fair coin. You win $2 if it lands on heads and $8 if it lands on tails. What is the average amount you should expect to win? The chance of getting heads is one out of two, and winning $2 gives. Two times one divided by two equals $1. The chance of getting tails is also one out of two, gives, 8 times 1 divided by 2 equals $4. Now, adding both results. 1 plus 4 equals $5. So, on average, you should expect to win $5 per flip, even though you never actually win exactly $5 in a single flip. This is called the expected value of the game. So, if I ask you, how much would you be willing to pay in order to play this game? Your answer must be less than $5, right? Keeping this in mind, next up we have a game called St. Petersburg's Lottery Game, where we keep on flipping a coin until it lands on heads. 
you win $2 if heads show up on the first flip, $4 if it comes on the second, $8 if on the third, and so on. The question is, how much should you be willing to pay in order to play this game? So let us find the expected value of this game. Suppose you flip the coin. If heads appear on the first flip, you win $2. The chance of this happening is one out of two. So the contribution of heads appearing on the first flip to the expected value is two times one divided by two, which equals one. If heads appear on the second flip, you win $4. On the first flip, you will get a tail whose chance is one half, and then you get a head which is also one half. So the chance of this happening is half times half, or one out of four, and therefore, its contribution is four times one divided by four, which is also one. If heads appear on the third flip, you win eight dollars. This means you get a tail on first try, a tail on second try, and a head on third try. So, the chance of this happening is half times half times half, or one out of eight. And therefore, its contribution is eight times one divided by eight, which is also one. This pattern continues forever, with each term adding one more to the expected value. Since this sum keeps growing without stopping, the expected value is infinite. This means that, mathematically, you should be willing to pay any amount to play this game, which feels completely unreasonable. In real life, it's counterintuitive that even though the game mathematically has an infinite expected value, no one would actually pay a huge amount to play it. Next up, we have Hilbert's Grand Hotel Paradox, where a hotel has infinitely many rooms, and all of them are occupied. A new guest arrives. How can the hotel still fit them in? Since the hotel has an infinite number of rooms, the manager can simply move every guest from room N to room N plus 1, freeing up room 1 for the new guest. This is strange because in real life, if a hotel is full, there is no space left. But in infinity, space can always be made. By the way, Derek has covered the same in great detail, and you must definitely watch it, but only after watching this video. Next up, we have Gabriel's horn. Imagine a trumpet-like shape that stretches infinitely far, but gets thinner and thinner. You would think that if it has an infinite surface, it should take infinite paint to cover it, right? Surprisingly, while the surface is infinite, the volume inside is finite. This means you could fill the shape completely with paint, but you would never be able to coat the outside with a finite amount of paint. The paradox comes from how surface area and volume grow differently in such shapes. Additive persistence is a neat number trick. For example, Take the number 9,876. If you add its digits, 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6, you get 30. Then, add the digits of 30 or 3 plus 0, and you get 3. So, the additive persistence of this number is 2. That counts how many times you need to add the digits of a number together until you end up with a single digit. Here comes the surprise. If we make a table for n and the smallest number with additive persistence of n, then the smallest number with additive persistence of 1 is 10. Then the smallest number with additive persistence of 2 is 19. Then the smallest number with additive persistence of 3 is 199. But here's where things blow up. The smallest number with additive persistence of 4 is 1 followed by 22 nines. And the smallest number with additive persistence of 5 is one followed by that many 9s. Lastly, we have Simpson's paradox. Imagine two departments at a university. In Department X, 100 women apply and 50 are accepted, giving a 50% acceptance rate, while 100 men apply and 40 are accepted for a 40% rate. In Department Y, 20 women apply and 18 are accepted, yielding a 90% rate, while 200 men apply and 140 are accepted, giving a 70% rate. 
even though in each department the acceptance rate for women is higher than for men, 50% versus 40% in Department X, and 90% versus 70% in Department Y, when you combine the data overall, women have a total of 68 acceptances out of 120 applications, which is about 56%, while men have a total of 180 acceptances out of 300 applications, which is about 60%. This counterintuitive result, where women have a lower overall acceptance rate, despite doing better in each individual department, perfectly illustrates Simpson's paradox. These counterintuitive problems show how our intuition can sometimes mislead us, and math helps uncover the real truth. Let me know which of the paradoxes surprised you the most. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. So good!